Coco the gorilla captured the hearts of many throughout her life. Gaining fame for her remarkable signing abilities. Her videos. Where she communicated with her hands. Became a global sensation. Showcasing the great ape's apparent ability to express her thoughts on various subjects. One of her final recordings contained a message for all of humanity. And it was undeniably profound. From a young age. Coco underwent meticulous training in a specific form of sign language. The researchers involved in this project eventually asserted that she had a grasp of approximately 2,000 signs. An impressive vocabulary. Her language skills allowed her to effectively convey her feelings. Coco passed away at the age of 46 in the summer of 2018. And her death was met with widespread sorrow as media outlets worldwide reported on her passing. Tributes poured in. And her story. That of a gorilla learning to sign to express herself. Deeply resonated with people. Over the years. Coco graced the covers of popular magazines and interacted with A-list celebrities. Her life fascinated many. And when she signed her thoughts. People paid attention. Not long before her passing. She had a message for all of us. Three years prior to her death. Coco starred in a video that struck a chord with numerous individuals. Perhaps this was because the message appeared to be directly aimed at humanity. In her video. The gorilla seemed to be expressing her profound thoughts on a significant subject. Leaving many people deeply moved. Throughout her life. Coco continually astonished people. Starting from her birth on July 4th, 1971. At the San Francisco Zoo. Originally named Hanabaiko. Which means, fireworks child, in Japanese. In reference to her Independence Day birth. Coco began receiving sign language lessons from Dr. Francine Patterson when she was just a year old. After years of training. She came to understand over a thousand sign language terms. Coco utilized her communication skills to express her desires and preferences. For example. In the winter of 1982. She had a Christmas request. She wanted a cat as a gift. Her caregivers initially gave her a doll. Which left her disappointed. However. Coco's persistence paid off. When her birthday came around. Her caregivers presented her with a group of real kittens. Allowing her to choose one to care for. She selected a white and gray fur baby and named it All Ball. Coco devoted great care to her new feline friend. Ron Cohn. A member of the team overseeing Coco. Spoke to the Los Angeles Times in 1985 about her relationship with All Ball. He explained that they would play together with Coco holding and petting the cat, which reciprocated as if it were a human. All ball. While appreciative of Coco's affection, was an independent cat and would sometimes bite or wriggle free when tired of being doted on. Coco took her role as a caretaker seriously. But she wasn't beyond shifting blame to the cat for her own misbehavior. On one occasion, Coco tore a sink away from the wall, but instead of admitting to her actions, she pointed at the cat and attempted to shift responsibility. Signing, cat did it. Tragically, Coco's time with all ball was cut short. Just six months into their companionship, all ball was accidentally run over and killed. Coco was evidently distraught upon learning the news emitting a distinct hooting sound that gorillas make when they're sad. This loss deeply affected Coco. And those around her shared in her grief. However. This wasn't the last cat to be taken under her care. As she looked after several more throughout the years. Capturing the imagination of many. In fact. Coco's fondness for felines became the subject of a book published in 1990. Titled, Coco's Kittens. It's important to note that Coco had already achieved fame long before the book's publication. Having graced the cover of National Geographic as early as 1978. 
and her story continued to captivate the public. Seven years later, Coco's fame had reached such heights that she became a celebrity in her own right. It's no surprise that she eventually started socializing with fellow stars. Coco was reportedly a big fan of Mr. Rogers and would regularly tune in to watch him on television. One day, she had the opportunity to meet Mr. Rogers in person. Another celebrity pal of Coco's was the late Robin Williams, whom she was introduced to in 2001. During their meeting, the gorilla and the comedian seemed to have a lot of fun, tickling each other and even playfully trying on Williams's glasses. When Robin Williams passed away in 2014, Coco had to be informed of the news. Photos later emerged online of the gorilla looking visibly sad, seemingly taken after she learned of her friend's death. Many people were touched by her apparent ability to comprehend and express complex emotions like grief. In lighter news, Coco had an interesting habit of referring to herself as Queen. She began doing this when she was young, just a few years into her life. She would use her paw to mimic the motion of a royal sash diagonally across her chest, which was her version of the sign for Queen. According to Coco's trainer, Dr. Patterson, the gorilla hadn't been exposed to the sign for Queen very often. Dr. Patterson explained in a 2015 interview with The Atlantic that Coco understood she was special due to the attention she received from professors, caregivers, and the media. Throughout her 46 years, Coco truly captured the hearts of many. When she passed away in 2018, an outpouring of grief ensued. A statement from the Gorilla Foundation succinctly summed up her impact, saying, Coco touched the lives of millions as an ambassador for all gorillas and an icon for interspecies communication and empathy. Coco was adored and her absence deeply felt throughout her life. She encouraged people to contemplate the connection between nature and humanity. One of the most poignant instances of this occurred in 2015 when she featured in a video recorded for the Paris Climate Summit, also known as COP21. In this video, the great ape conveyed a profoundly significant message through sign language. It appeared that she was addressing all of humanity conveying a message highly relevant to the focus of the climate conference. She seemed to implore human beings to take better care of our planet. Translated from her version of sign language, Coco's message seemed to be a plea, stating, I am gorilla. I am flowers, animals. I am nature. Man Coco love earth. Coco love. But man stupid, stupid. Coco sorry. Coco cry. Time hurry. Fix earth. Help earth. Hurry. Protect earth. Nature see you. Thank you. The Gorilla Foundation released a statement alongside the video. Emphasizing that Coco was indeed speaking about humans damaging the earth. The statement noted. Coco was clear about the main message. Man is harming the earth and its many animals and plant species and needs to hurry and fix the problem. It was a powerful message. Particularly coming from a species different from our own. Coco's video aimed to cut through the noise of human debate. And her message was unequivocal. She wanted our species to protect the other living beings that share the earth with us. This video left some people profoundly moved as they witnessed another animal echoing their own concerns about how humans are treating the planet. It served as a sobering reminder. However, it's worth noting that this video may not be as straightforward as it initially appears. Some individuals are suspicious of it. And the full context of the video remains unclear. For instance, we cannot see what's happening outside of the frame. And it's possible that a trainer may be coaxing the gorilla to sign in a particular way. The video in question is undoubtedly heavily edited. Making it challenging to confirm if Coco delivered a coherent message in a single take. 
The Guerrilla Foundation itself admitted that the video was compiled from various takes. And careful editing can potentially create messages that weren't originally intended. For argument's sake. Let's assume that the editing didn't fundamentally alter Coco's speech. And there was no off-camera guidance even then. We can't definitively prove that the gorilla was specifically expressing concern about humanity's impact on the earth. Her signs and gestures can be interpreted in various ways. There's also a more cynical perspective to consider, some argue that it benefits experts to emphasize the ability of gorillas like Coco to express complex emotions because such stories attract attention and, in turn, lead to more funding for research of this nature. However, the reality is that we don't have concrete evidence that these apes can think in the ways the Gorilla Foundation has long claimed, Barbara King. A biological anthropologist with expertise in primate behavior and emotions. Has raised skepticism. She argues that humans sometimes project their own behaviors and characteristics onto other species. Potentially leading to a fundamental misinterpretation of how these animals truly function. A gorilla's mind differs from ours. And it's improbable that they can comprehend a subject as complex as the impact of humans on the world. Even Coco's signing abilities have been subject to scrutiny. When she passed away, the media celebrated her supposed proficiency in sign language, however. Dr. Adam Shembri from the University of Birmingham pointed out that Coco's sign language was an adapted form of American Sign Language, ASL. The claim that Coco had fully mastered sign language, as some news outlets asserted, has been challenged by experts in the field Gerardo Ortega, an expert in sign language, suggested that Coco at most ritualized the use of some signs related to the here and now, and she used them primarily after her trainer prompted her. In essence, her capacity for language may not have been as sophisticated as it initially appeared. Professor Graham Turner from Harriet Watt University also joined the debate, emphasizing that serious efforts to teach apes some signs began in the 1960s. Researchers attempted to teach individual signs derived from American Sign Language, ASL. And the apes did learn to use some hand gestures in this manner. However, it is misleading to suggest that Coco or any ape has ever learned to use a natural sign language like a human. Professor Turner explained that natural sign languages, such as ASL, involve the face, body, and hands in an integrated way, utilizing a multidimensional spatial medium through the layering of simultaneous and highly precise visual elements. Communication in ASL or similar sign languages entails command of a much more complex system of linguistic expression. In simpler terms, the argument contends that apes do not possess minds capable of engaging in language systems as complex as those used by humans. There is no definitive evidence to prove that they can do so. Even apes trained in sign language do not seem to form entire sentences naturally. Instances where it appears they can do so usually occur when trainers encourage them. And observers interpret these prompted signs as fully formed sequences of thought from the ape. This perspective suggests that Coco may not have fully understood what she was saying in her video for COP21. However, despite this, the video's noble message resonated with many viewers, encouraging them to reflect on how human actions impact the planet. So, while Coco's linguistic abilities may not have been as advanced as once believed, the broader message still had a positive impact on raising awareness about environmental issues. In the end, the perception of Coco's video and her communication skills comes down to personal preference. Some will view the video as a worthwhile exercise that raises awareness, while others may see it as a publicity stunt that trivializes an important issue. Regardless of the differing opinions, Coco undeniably held a special place in the hearts of many people worldwide, even if her sign language skills weren't as advanced as initially portrayed. She was still a remarkable and captivating animal. She succeeded in making people contemplate humanity's relationship with our fellow living creatures. If you enjoyed the video, 
please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. The little boy is arguing loudly with his father. Outside the house. There is a wolf lying quietly on the carriage. What are they arguing about? What's the matter with this wolf? Do you believe in miracles in the world? Whether you believe it or not, this magical story happened in that remote mountain village. The winter of this year is very cold. It snows almost every day. This winter doesn't look like it will end. Not only the people who live here suffer from the cold. Wild animals wander around on an empty stomach. Under the snow. It is difficult for them to find food. A man named Tom lives in a village close to the forest with his 12-year-old son Alexander. During the day. Tom always goes hunting in the forest. His son is at home looking after the farm. They have been living such an ordinary life. But a special day is coming. This morning. Tom started his hunting work. But it's too cold and it's snowing outside. He came back empty-handed, Tom is on his way home. He noticed something strange. Under a stout tree. A nearly frozen wolf curled up aside. It is covered with thick snow. We can't even spot it without looking carefully. Tom was very happy and put the wolf on the wagon. He plans to make a hat for his son out of wolf fur when he gets home. As soon as Tom entered the house. He told Alexander. There's a big surprise waiting for him in the carriage. Alexander ran out excitedly. He came back soon. He was very surprised. Is my father going to give me a living wolf? Tom is a little surprised that the wolf is alive. When he picked it up just now. It was already frozen. Unexpectedly. This wolf is still tenaciously alive. So Tom went back into the room took out his weapon and aimed at the wolf.at this time. Alexander stood in front of the wolf. It wants to persuade the father not to hurt the defenseless animal. They should help it and put it back in the forest. Tom disagreed at first. But Alexander insisted on doing so and he eventually relented. In the end the wolf was housed in an unoccupied house. Alexander lit the furnace for it. In this way, Alexander took care of the wolf meticulously. He brings food on time every day. He also found the quilt and spread it on the floor, Tom is worried that the wolf will attack his son. He always told his son to be careful and stay away from the wolf. But Alexander knew. The wolf won't hurt him at all. It has never been aggressive. While feeding that IT even licks Alexander's hand affectionately. The wolf's move seems to be thanking Alexander. Tom gradually got used to the presence of the wolf. He took good care of it with his son. But what they don't know is that danger is coming quietly. It's snowing this time. Other wolves in the forest can't find food. They broke into the village. Trying to fill their stomachs. The villagers closed their doors tightly. Fearing that they would be attacked by wolves. Today. After Tom went out. The door of the house is not closed. Alexander didn't realize it either. A wolf crept into their yard. When Alexander saw it. The wolf was very close to him. There is a hint of ferocity in its eyes. It slowly approached Alexandria. At this time. A figure flashed beside Alexander. It was the wolf at home. It stood in front of the little master and stared angrily at the uninvited guest. Unexpectedly. The wolf that broke in escaped. It looked scared. Alexander was very surprised. The wolf it saved was so powerful. What they don't know is. This wolf is the leader of the pack of wolves in the forest. The wolf king. Its majesty is self-evident. This wolf king has completely regarded this place as its home. When the owner is in danger. It will stand up without hesitation to protect the safety of its owner. It understands that Alexander is its savior. 
so it will protect Alexander. It seems that wolves are also very spiritual animals. Wolves are very intelligent animals. Not only are they quick-witted. They also possess delicate emotions. They will always remember those who have helped them. And look for opportunities to repay human beings. John used to live in a noisy city. But he likes a quiet life. So he moved into a small remote village on the outskirts. The village is next to a large forest. It took John a whole year to get used to life here. And he is more and more able to find fun in a quiet and peaceful life. Living close to the forest. John has more opportunities to feel the charm of nature. He often walks alone in the forest. But there are many wild animals in the forest. The locals offer John many ways to defend himself. In this way. John lived here for three years. But after this incident. His life was completely changed. Once John was walking in the forest. John heard a faint cry in the bushes. This sound is unusually abrupt in the quiet forest. John stepped up to check. Here's a little wolf cub. Its hind paws were caught in a trap set by poachers. It screams helplessly. It's too small. John felt sorry for it. So he rescued it. John also took it home to take care of. After returning home. John prepared the food and nest. He wants the pup to live comfortably. The little wolf is just born and is very curious about the world. It has long regarded this place as its home. It lives very comfortably. A few months have passed. And the little wolf's physique has grown a lot. It also gets along very well with John. But John decided to let it go. Let it return to the embrace of nature. After the cub had a good meal. John took it into the depths of the forest and set the little wolf free. John has been living here too. He never saw the little wolf he saved. But fate connects them again. In a snowy winter. John went for a walk in the forest as usual. However. He accidentally caught his foot in a bear trap. The severe pain made him lose consciousness that he passed out. When he woke up. His body was covered with snowflakes. He struggled to remove the trap. But the injured foot can no longer support him to walk. So he can only crawl forward. But the danger is approaching. After John had climbed half a mile. Several wolves jumped out of the nearby woods. They are slowly approaching John. John was filled with despair. He knew he was doomed. But at this moment. The leader of the pack of wolves suddenly appeared. It stood in front of John and howled loudly into the sky a few times. John raised his head and found that it was the little wolf cub he had saved. It did grow well. It also became the king of wolves. Under the leadership of this wolf the wolves quickly retreated into the forest. And the howling just now attracted a hunter. He helped John get home safely. In order to save its master. The wolf gave up its prey, for it. It is a deep emotion. Maybe for animals. Humans give them hope of survival. Although they can't express their gratitude in words. The gratitude in their hearts is always there, they will never put their saviors in danger. In fact. Many wild animals are like this. Although they look fierce. They are soft inside. When we meet animals in distress. We should do our best to help them, seemingly small help means a lot to animals. Well. That's all for this video. If you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. See you next time.